Nothing like dremeling to start off a project. Welcome back to the channel everyone, my name is Matt and as I hinted at a couple weeks ago when I reviewed this particular Zestava M92 pistol, this firearm is officially mine. I just bought this off my good friend and I gotta say I am very excited to start working on this, restoring it and modifying it. Like I said in that review, I'm going to be making it into a Krinkov style. That's the AKS-74U, the Krinkov. I'm gonna be making it into a Krinkov style firearm. As you can see, I've actually already started that process. As I said in that review, you can easily dremel off the muzzle nut on the end of the barrel. And then Zestava makes this muzzle booster. Come on. Zestava makes this muzzle booster that just fits right on. And I decided, you know what? It's actually not very expensive. I think these are only $30 through Zestava Arms. So I went ahead and bought that. And I said, I didn't realize that one of the things I needed to also get in addition to the muzzle booster, I'm not sure if you can see it here. We'll get close to the camera. I had to add this detent pin and spring to the gas block here that holds in, going the wrong way just holds in the muzzle booster, holds it in line so that it doesn't go all wonky when you fire it, the recoil is controlled properly. So we'll screw that there. So the detent just fits into the little notches in this muzzle booster and it just keeps it from rotating or working its way off as you fire the gun. Now again, as I previously mentioned, this gun needs a little bit of TLC. There's quite a bit of surface rust on different portions of the gun. And I'm gonna break it down here for you in a moment and show you the real problem areas. I'm gonna call them problem areas, but again, they really aren't that bad. They just need to be brushed off with a brass cleaning brush and some, some gun oil and that kind of stuff, some cleaning supplies. And I'll show you what I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna go ahead and break this down and I'll show you the parts that need to be addressed, the areas that need uh, the most attention and we'll get to cleaning it up. Before we get into the teardown, I just wanna take a moment to thank everyone watching this. Thank you to all of our viewers, all of our subscribers. We really appreciate it. If you enjoy this content, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Also be sure to hit that bell icon for future content, get notifications for when a new video drops. We usually have new stuff go up every Thursday, but we have some bonus stuff go up through the week and we really don't want you to miss that. We've set a pretty lofty goal for this year. We wanna hit over a thousand subscribers by year end. Now, I know we have 12 months to do that and we're currently at 450 subscribers, which is incredible. The fact that we have almost 500 in the grand scheme of things blows our minds. So again, thank you. Okay, I got the M92 torn down into the basic components. We're not going to be tearing it all the way down because we don't need to do a complete restoration. We don't need to replace any major components on the gun. We just need to get rid of surface rust. Because this is the first time I've done any kind of restoration work on a firearm, I believe in following the rule of start on a very small place to test your abilities and go from there once you feel like you've done a good job. So we're going to actually be starting on the, the front here where the handguard is held in place. There's just a little bit of discoloration here, a little bit of, I don't really want to call it pitting, but it is not smooth anymore. And I'm just going to try my hand at cleaning that up with a brush, a little bit of steel wool. If, if we really need to, I'll re-blue it, but I really think it's just going to need a touch-up pen. And once we have that taken care of, we'll move on to the rest of the gun. So the biggest area of concern for my M92 is actually just right in here. And I don't know if we're gonna be able to get it focused too much. Give me one second here. There's just a, quite a bit of surface rust here. And I think as this gun has gotten greased and oiled, I think it's just spread the discoloration into other areas on the gun because as I was greasing and I was cleaning it, some of the orange was coming off and, and cleaning up very nicely. I haven't really touched this. And I think just a little bit of a elbow grease and a brass brush and some TLC here in a little bit, we'll be able to get that looking pretty nice. 
The other area that needs to be addressed, I'm not flagging everyone, you can all relax, focus. You're not gonna focus, there we go. Uh, is where I did a really sloppy job of cutting off just that muzzle nut weld. And I really wasn't trying to make it pretty at that point. I do have the other tools for the Dremel. I'm gonna be filing, sanding that down and getting that as flush as I can in with the gas block without actually cutting into the gas block. Once I have that all smoothed and filed down, I'll be cold bluing that and using some touch-up paint that I got just to do a spot treatment of that area. It should look pretty good all said and done, and I'm not really that concerned with it. And you know what? We'll keep an eye on it as time goes on, and if I need to have it professionally blued, we can do that for sure. I am going to do a little bit of refinishing here on the wood handguard furniture. I really think it's mostly just going to be doing a oil finish on it, maybe smooth out this area with a very fine sandpaper. But I really do like the wood furniture. I'm not gonna replace it with any polymer. I want to retain the overall aesthetic of the M92 for as it came from the factory, because it really is a nice looking firearm. So at the bare minimum, I'm gonna try oiling this. I've got a couple of different oil slash stain things that we can try, but I think I'm just gonna use the same oil that I use, that true oil that I use on my M1 Garand. Okay, with that out of the way, let's take this out to the shop and get started. Real quick before I actually get started, I just wanna call out the stuff that I'm going to be using. It's kind of a mix of a few different items. First, I'm gonna be using the Birchwood bluing system. I'm not gonna be using the blue stripper, the rust remover. I'm mostly gonna be using the cold bluing bottle just to cover up that little bit of the, the muzzle nut weld that I had to cut off and sand down. But we're gonna be also using the cleaner and the degreaser. Other than that, I'm gonna be using some cotton patches. Uh, I've got a nylon brush, and then I've also got some brass brushes that I'm gonna use to try and, again, remove the rust without actually removing any of the finish that would be left on here. What is that? You know, that may not be perfect, but that's a heck of a lot better. And once we use the touch-up pen, re-blue it, then re touch it up with the black pen, I think that will be pretty unnoticeable. So I got everything cleaned up, and I gotta tell you, the finish didn't come off of anything, really, except where I cut the weld holding the muzzle nut on, for obvious reasons. and. This little stamped piece that holds the handguard on. And if I'm honest, I don't know if this was ever even blued in the first place. I'm not trying to cut corners here. I just, I don't think I need to re-blue anything. I don't need to cold blue very much. I'm gonna throw a light coating of the bluing, the perma blue on this stamped piece here. And of course I am gonna coat the front of the, the gas block here, since that is just bare, completely bare metal and we'll go from there so this this job is actually getting a lot easier and that's great because I do have a modification coming to this end in the near future it's a brace it's just a brace brace not the other thing leave them those alone you know I really wasn't expecting the bluing of the steel especially on that nut cut to <laughs> blend so well with the gas block, but here we are. Huh, I uh, might just leave that as is. Okay, and I uh, reattached the uh, piece here, the handguard retainer clip, whatever we wanna call that. I mean, again, it, it's looking just fine. I think we're gonna leave that as is, 
And I think we're gonna move on. And there you have it. This is looking so much better. You know, I was gonna do the handguard restoration in this video, but you know, since I've got that brace coming uh, at the end of the week, I figure I'll just save the, the brace and the wood furniture for the next part of this and you will really get to see my crink lookalike M92 really come together. I'm really excited about this build. Uh, Steve is really looking forward to shooting this again once we have a brace on it and with the muzzle booster and once I have it all back together, cleaned, properly lubricated, I think this is going to operate like a brand new firearm or at least much better than what we experienced with it the first time out at the range which i still really enjoyed anyway i think that's going to do it for this episode everybody again i really hope you enjoy this series as it's coming along i'm really looking forward to showing you the next part and part four where we, uh, steve and i get this back out to the range anyway thank you so much for watching to the end of this video you yes you sitting on your couch eating popcorn you are the true fans of the phantom llamas den look for part three of this series in the next coming weeks we've got some fun at the range coming in probably next week maybe the week after as always don't take life too seriously and make it a great day